quando tantissimi anni fa ero un giovane ragazzo, ebbi l'occasione di leggere su un trafiletto di un giornale una affermazione del professor Gazzani che la mia vita cambiò perché incominciarono a organizzarsi dei pezzi che fino a quel momento nella mia mente erano eh, staccati e fluttuanti in un continuum. L'affermazione diceva che dentro di noi c'è un qualche cosa che il professor Gazzanica chiamava interprete, che ci permette di riconsiderare la nostra storia, gli eventi, e di organizzarli in una maniera nuova e creativa, non solo subendoli, ma potendoli utilizzare per il nostro fine, che è migliorarci, migliorare far migliorare intorno a noi il mondo. Infatti, nessuno fa il male deliberatamente. Quando ci troviamo a compiere delle azioni che non sono per il bene comune, dovremmo dire a noi stessi che lo stiamo facendo in una condizione di sonno profondo, in una condizione di mancanza di lucidità, perché infatti, appena ritorniamo in noi stessi, queste condizioni che ci hanno spinto a compiere dei gesti non positivi per l'insieme, non positivi per noi stessi, eh, ci costringono a un attimo di pausa e di riflessione. Che strategie, ragazzi! Strategie eccezionali! È stato per me un ispiratore del mio progetto di vita, perché il suo libro, Il cervello sociale, nel 1984, quando fu pubblicato, mi eh, aprì la mente. Signori a voi, Michael Gazzanica. Luis Alvarez, uh, the great physicist and Nobel laureate from the University of California, once made the observation that uh, actually people uh, assume, commonly assume that scientists are curious. He said, no, that's not what it is. Scientific mind is, they don't believe something doesn't feel right to them when someone tells them something. They think of ways to examine the presumptions of what is being told to them, and they do experiments. I was fortunate enough to uh, fall into the hands of a scientific program that was examining humans who had a brain-altering moment. They were patients who had had their the two halves of their brains separated in an effort to control seizure activity. This was the so-called split-brain observation. We then took these uh, people and studied them very carefully over the years, and uh, we could examine what each brain was better at, what each brain could do, whether information transferred from one half brain to another. The left hemisphere, just like a new and me, can name and describe anything it receives. The right hemisphere uh, remained quiet about the information, but you could get it to draw out answers because that capacity uh, still remained. So uh, over the years, many, many studies like this were shown to show these dramatic effects of uh, hemisphere disconnection. So we did these experiments uh, time after time, and over the years, uh, it gave rise to this notion of left brain, right brain, that all of us can do two things at once. One hand can be doing one thing, and the other hand can be doing the other, that there were sort of two mental systems all within the same cranium. And finally, we were sitting around and asking the question, well, what do these patients think about this? So finally, we said, why don't we ask the patients what they, th they think about this experience? And that's where we discovered the interpreter. But there's a special device in your left hemisphere called the interpreter, and it tries to figure out the meaning of patterns of information that you produce. It tries to figure out the emotions that you generate. So you realize, after you do hundreds of these tests, that what we're talking about is there's a system in our brain that makes up a story that goes to explain the behaviors that we are constantly producing, the moods that we're constantly in, it's after the fact. It, the behaviors occur, and then our storytelling about their meaning uh, comes to assist us in our understanding. And when you think further about it, you realize that 99% of everything that goes on in our brain 
goes on outside the realm of consciousness, from the genetic influences to the neurophysiological actions, uh, all the way up to all kinds of systems uh, interactions. All of that goes on without our conscious awareness. And the notion is that by the time anybody in this room is consciously aware of anything, their brain has already processed the information. So by the time you think of something, the brain's work is over because it generated the response that allows for your conscious reality. We are living in a post hoc world. We are living where we have all of these systems working away to manage our behavior, to manage our moods. And, uh, and yet that feels, that feels weird. I mean, that would feel weird. And so we've evolved to seem to have a system in the left brain, this interpreter that takes all of that information and builds our story, builds our narrative, builds our beliefs about what's going on. And we back refer that information in time so that we think we initiated all of this and we are uh, responsible for all of it, all of this. So by understanding these systems, I think ultimately there's great hope in it in that we can now look at someone who has a passionate belief about something and not probably uh, make any impact on them changing their belief, but by them learning how that belief came about, they may become a little more whimsical about it and come to the conclusion that maybe the best way to understand and to come to grips with the variety of thousands of beliefs that people have in our world culture, that we should go to the data, go to the objective information and see if we can build from that point out as opposed to trying to impact these beliefs. Un attimo prima che iniziasse la giornata di oggi, di 21 minuti, il professor Gazzani, che era seduto lì in prima fila, dove c'è quella sedia vuota, e io mi sono accostato per preparare con lui l'intervento e gli ho chiesto «Prof, gli piace, le piace il format?» Lui mi ha risposto «Sì, molto, mi è piaciuto molto il cuoco». <ride> e, e poi mi ha detto Nelle università è un dramma. Io vado continuamente in molte università. Nelle università è un dramma, perché questa è un'università. Questo è eh, un mondo trasversale che mette insieme il sapere e lo rende eccellente.